And so to the first track final of the day, the men's 110 metres hurdles. And this is the lineup. Greg Foster in lane four at 33, going for a world championship hat trick. Can he do it? Well, this final devalued, it has to be said a little, because there's no Colin Jackson, no Ronaldo Nehemiah, no Roger Kingdom, and no Tony Dees for varying reasons. But this is Vladimir Shishkin from the Soviet Union on the inside. His best form was in 1988, to be honest. Dan Philibert, who's performed miracles with lifetime best just to reach this final. Surprise finalist from France, only 21. Mark McCoy, twice the Commonwealth champion, fourth in Helsinki at the World Championships, and seventh in the Rome final. Now this is Greg Foster. Well, the hairline might be receding, but the talent isn't. He's run his fastest for 10 years this year at 13.06. He says he's better than ever, and he's fired up here to go for his third World Championship. Tremendous high hurdler who's been in the world's best for 14 years now. But will the young prince, Tony Jarrett, who just edged him out in the semi-final, take over? Full of talent. He's been in the shadow a little of Colin Jackson, but he's beaten Jackson twice this season. And he made the Olympic final at a very young age of 20, still only 22. Jarrett, a threat to Foster. Then Jack Pierce, who was fourth last time in Rome and looks in form here. The man from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, who's run his fastest time this year at 13.23. Florian Schwarthoff, the tall, lanky German. He's over two meters tall. He was second to Jarrett, by the way, in the European Junior Championships back in 1987. Now they've both come of age, of course. And Tom Lee, Tony Lee as they call him in the United States where he's at college, from China on the outside. This young man has got talent, but he's fallen in three finals when leading. Greg Foster, born in Chicago, based in California. 11 years older than Tony Jarrett, who crosses himself. Jarrett discovered in a Tottenham playground by his coach John Isaacs who could see just from the way Jarrett moved that he had athletic ability. Shishkin, Philibert, McCoy, Foster, Jarrett, Pierce, Schwarthoff and Lee the World Championship 110 meter hurdle final of 1991. Yeah. And it's a full start by Foster it looked like in lane four so that might put a little bit of extra pressure on him, Peter. It does. He's certainly well used to pressure. He's also had a number of occasions on the circuit, which he's uh, full started twice. And he's not uh, done anything like that in a major final, but definitely he was the one first away, brought McCoy, always a notoriously fast starter, if that's the right word, along with him. Virtually no wind here, conditions ideal for a quick time. If anything, it's slightly into their faces. But they won't mind that too much in the hurdles. What they don't want is a too strong wind, which will either bring them into the hurdles too quickly or, indeed, make them have to stretch for them. So one full start against Greg Foster. The lineup again, then. Vladimir Shishkin, Soviet yeah, Union, yeah, yeah. Dan Philibert, France, Mark McCoy, Canada, Greg Foster, United States, Tony Jarrett, Britain, Jack Pierce, United States, Florian Schwarthoff, the emerging young German, and Tony Lee, Tong Lee, from China on the outside is Greg Foster a little matter of 13 and a bit seconds away from his third world title yeah. this time they get away Foster was just a little slowly out McCoy went very quickly McCoy in the lead at the moment Foster's come back to him Jarrett's got plenty of work to do it's Foster who leads at the moment also going well there is Jack Pierce Foster's got this in his pocket Foster and Jack Pierce on the line maybe Pierce grabbed that or was it Foster is very close indeed between the two Americans and Tony Jarrett the British hope just never ever got into the picture very very close photo on the line was it Foster or was it Pierce I must admit with the naked eye it was too close to call and I'd like to see the replay of that so too with the two athletes just looking at it on the big screen above them too I think it may have been Greg Foster but they're looking back you'll see their reaction when the runners hit the tape in the replay all right who's going to leap in the air I think it's going to well we'll have to wait for the photo 
Jack Pierce certainly ran the race of his life there. The winning time of 13.06. That's far faster than he's ever run before. Very close to the fastest time in the world this year of 13.05. And the pair of them go round for a lap of honour. Nothing much between them, Ian. OK, we're in the corner. We've got guns to our head, Peter. On that replay, if I had to make a decision, I would say Pierce got that. You may be right. Foster was leading, I would say, about a metre to go, but he didn't dip enough for the line. Let's have a look at it. McCoy got off to his usual electric start. Jarrett was slowly away. Foster and Pierce were running pretty well stride for stride throughout this whole race. McCoy will begin to go back. Jarrett will come through for bronze. But let's concentrate now on Greg Foster in lane four and on Jack Pierce in lane six and see who of these great Americans came through to take the gold medal. Is it Foster slightly ahead as the last hurdle? I think it is slightly. But they really are stride for stride. Who dips for the line better? Is it Jack Pierce nearer to us? I think it might be, but my word, they're going to have to look at that photo very long and hard. Jarrett certainly got the bronze medal for Britain after a slow start. This, now, this is the picture. Uh, new technology here in Japan, and this may tell us more. They're able to break it down for you like this. Now, you can almost make your own mind up here. It won't be official. That's down to the judge. Remember, it's the torso, not the head. Foster's head's ahead. It's the torso. This is the torso. Well, that's as close as a dead heat as I think you can call. Absolutely level. You still can't see from that. In horse racing, they'd want about 74 reprints of that. And these are the two men. They've got gold and silver. But who's got the gold not, and who's got the silver? Not necessarily, and it could be two golds. Have we ever had a dead heat before at a world championship? I don't think so, have we? No, I don't think we have. We have had them at some major championships, but not yet at a world championship. Could be a little bit of history being made here. And, of course, if it is a uh, gold medal, well, he's been given world champion, it says, Greg Foster. I should think Mr. Pierce will want to examine the photo as well, though. But officially, Greg Foster, it's come up, has been given it. That's a hat trick for Greg Foster. Well... Greg Foster has got the decision, and there it is. Both with the same time, championship records for both. Nothing between them. Tony Jarrett gets the bronze, 13.25 seconds. But what an achievement for Greg Foster, the first man ever to do the hat-trick of world titles. But he does say that he'd give all those gold medals up for just one Olympic gold, and he'll be shooting for that next year in Barcelona. Here it is again. Foster, so strong, so powerful, he attacks his hurdles. And the expression on the face says all. He wasn't that quickly away. It was McCoy, look, who's about half a metre up there on the far side. Then Foster, Pierce is going well, near side number six. And this is the head-on. How many of them did the leading contenders here hit? Snapping, yes, he hit that one all right there, just with the thigh, Foster. Snapping that lead leg down. And you're looking head-on at the face of a now triple world champion, Greg Foster. What an athlete. And the oldest world championship gold medalist on the track ever.